All right, so thanks guys for coming back. Today, what I wanna get into is some workflow tips and tricks for FL Studio Mobile. So let's dive in, all right? So I've got this one here set up, something I'm working on right now. Guys, if you like what you're hearing, if you like these videos and you wanna to subscribe to the channel, please do that early. Like right now would be a good time, why not? Uh, tell a friend and you know, Put the alerts on why not turn on those notifications and leave a comment guys let me know what you think and let's dive in so you know there is no right and there is no wrong way to do it i'll tell you that it's it's not that cut and dry but there are certain things that you want to do when it comes to music production there's certain things you want to focus on certain things you don't want to let's say overlook okay so First things first, for me, you know, let's just say you have an instrumental or you have some sounds you want to use. It, it could be drums, but perhaps you're starting with drums, perhaps you're starting with some type of lead, right? I definitely would say that for a lot of electronic music, you have some lead instrument that is kind of telling a story, maybe presenting a, a main melody. You also have, you know, a lot of times drums, some sort of drums, bass drums, some type of snare, you know, some hi-hats or shakers of some sort, right? To keep the rhythm and to keep the time, I suppose. And you definitely have some type of bass, right? So that's what we have here. Pretty simple. We have a drum track here, right? Some drums. And let me actually do like that. Got some drums. Okay. We have a, a bass line as well. You hear a bass line come in there. Okay. Let's check it out a bit. Right, just a simple bass line there. So let's start here. Okay, so the reason I wanna start here is because we wanna look at separation, okay? The bass drum and the bass line, the bass guitar, synth bass, 808 bass, whatever it may be, you probably wanna keep these somewhat separate. Okay, so panning is very important and this is part of workflow getting the idea of let's say spatial uh, awareness stereo imaging you want to keep that in mind from the very beginning with everything you're doing so it could be panning a lot of times if you guys have been subscribed to the channel you know that i use various tools for panning within fl studio perhaps i'll use the multi-band compressor to work with the width another thing you see right here and this is on the main bass line uh track here you'll see that i've done some panning to create more of a stereo image with the distortion as you see right here okay and then even through the through the through the mixer you may also see that i have panned it more to the left as you see it's pretty strong to the left but i also did this and you know putting this in the minus actually brings that to the to the right so I kind of compensated a bit by moving these to the left so that the bass goes to the, to the right. Now, this is, to me, very much a part of workflow, okay? Now, something that's more, I guess, maybe more off the top of the head or, or more um, directly related to workflow is, again, finding these instruments that, have, that fill in different frequency ranges, right? So getting your tracks in order, again, like I said, it could be drums, it could be a bass drum, snare drum, some type of hi-hat or some type of rhythmic shaker perhaps um, a bass line some type of lead maybe something to go to go down the back in the background so let's actually let's mute and solo these so we can hear that okay another thing i do especially when it comes to channels so if i've got drums as you see one two three i'll also well, so in this case right one and two i will create a mix where i can a, tr a track that i can use to mix my drums a little further okay something to unify the sounds so if i've got a drum a bass drum from one kit and a snare drum from, from another and a shaker from one and maybe some type of um hi-hat pattern or some some cymbals or something or another from another pattern another kit pardon me i may put all three or four of those sounds into one channel and start to work on those together so as you see i got a compressor going on here for the drums okay 
you got another compressor on the drums um some of these haven't been really applied yet because again you know we're just working on this right here with you guys live essentially but i've got some you know some some um parallel processing going on on the drums to bring it all together right so they're all individual sounds on their own but i do want to put them into one channel as you see you can you know drop it right here with the auxiliary effect track and you can send these sounds directly to that by going down here and and uh choosing drum as you see right and you can mix it and mix and match with drums maybe you have space maybe you have a uh, room sounds or maybe you have reverb well it's kind of room and space you have some delay tracks it's up to you guys you know maybe if there, there's so many things you could do and you can layer these like i've said kind of in my more recent videos as well uh, you can layer these these uh, auxiliary tracks and to create your own unique balance and kind of emulsify things to, to create a, a nice solid blend okay to kind of make them more or less uh, an, a single kit in a way okay so if you look at my tracks and my my channel strip right here oftentimes i lead off with some type of compressor then i might actually go into a multi-band compressor sometimes i go straight for multi-band it really depends right so i'll go into a multi-band compressor again so i can adjust the width and do some mid-side processing i want to actually start to compress the overall final mix now the way i'm processing this particular channel it can also be done the exact same way for every single track whether it's a vocal uh synthesizer trumpet um you know drums you atmospheric sounds you guys name it i pretty much have the same type of workflow for everything i'll add a little bit of distortion i might work with the panning of the distortion as you guys know right to bring out some of those harmonics to make it cut through the mix um and then of course once i get deal with dynamics now this is where it kind of gets tricky in some way not so much tricky but um maybe contentious or controversial it really doesn't matter to me some people think it's okay you, some, some people think you have to start with bass or sorry some people think you have to start with compressors like dynamics and then you move on to equalizers or filters it's up to you to me you know there are different ways of dealing with it personally i like to deal with dynamics first i like to lead off with compressors um another compressor then i go to distortion again this is all about levels and then i slowly go into the equalization of things because i want to find a balance in terms of the volume of the overall kind of general mix and the panning the, the, the stereo imaging before i really start diving into eq now of course sometimes i may drop an eq in right away as the first thing because i realize you know what this thing stands out really well here or i want to cut this frequency out there but then i might insert above something above it like uh again a, some compressor or something something to manage the levels right so that's as you see right here so compressor multi-band compressor a little distortion uh for some harmonics and then some eq okay as you see i got a couple of eqs here and then oftentimes after that let me go to another one you'll see here then i start adding other effects so i've got this uh multi effects on here i've got some panner happening here okay let me see what else i've got here nothing really so let's just say for these ones i may add let's say some type of chorus or flanger or phaser but i do those things those let's say in this case miscellaneous i use those effects plugins once i've established a decent shape for the tone for the sound um in terms of its its levels okay the, and the dynamics and then i get into the eq and then i start to say hey what type of chorus do i want in this um what type of flanger do i want in this do i want any phaser do i want to go to the multi effects for example and start messing around with the high pass filter reverb and and some do some modulate uh, some um some automation to this to this modulation here right uh, those are the main things I'd say and of course all along the way you'll notice here I don't have it on this channel but on some of them I actually have uh, an analyzer right so I definitely always have the analyzer as well that's another part of my workflow I want to see how things are looking in the mix I'm not super concerned with the loudness in the earlier stages but definitely when my mix is coming together a little more uh, solidly then I will actually say hey let me start looking at the loudness and uh, because I'm getting to the point where I want to make sure that my mix or my master is actually um, solid enough good enough to to be played on most 
commercial systems, whether it be uh, your phone, uh, your your desktop computer speakers, your laptop computer speakers, your headphones, your earbuds, you name it. And also, of course, I'm looking at the loudness to make sure that it's at a good level for if I'm publishing the music, whether it be to you name it any pretty much any platform whether you're pressing it to a disc uh, vinyl cassette cd you name it mp3 wave file uploads it, it doesn't matter you definitely want to start getting into some of the loudness and analyzing that now another thing as well which you don't you may not see on this particular channel strip here or any of these things here as okay here's a great example look at this right i actually just saw it what i was going to get into so i've got my main sound here which is this uh this one here let me do this this okay okay so this one i've got it right here and then i've got a compressor again multi-band compressor again right then and you see some separations adjusting the width so that it works well in a stereo mix or a mono mix and then i have a little bit of auto duck again this is all levels right so i got my auto duck on this one here and i got a little distortion right here again another thing you want to consider with the workflow is to go into these sounds and start adjusting some of these effects so here you see i added a little distortion already i added a little delay i don't think i added any okay yeah and i added a little bit of chorus and i did not engage the phaser because I just didn't think it was necessary for the tone that I wanted, right? So you make your choice on that. That's, of course, completely up to you as the user, right? So let's continue on after I do my um, my leveling with my compressors and my distortion and my auto duck and, and uh, you know, sidechain compression, things like that. Pa even parallel compression by way of different auxiliary tracks, like I showed in, in previous videos and, and earlier today just a bit. And then I start getting into my EQ. Once I finish the EQ, again, there's filtering, which is also EQ. Then I start getting more into the stereo image. Now, yes, I could use a stereoizer in FL Studio Mobile. I could also use a spacer, but I can also use the pan, just simply panning just right here. As you see, it's panned more to the left. And, but then I also compensated by delaying the left over here. There, there's so many ways you could do it to create a nice stereo image, right? And so those are the main things I do uh, to keep the workflow going so that I can really just get to my ideas really, really quickly. There's one other thing I'll add to that makes the workflow just a bit tighter and, and simpler to manage if you are if you want to pop, crank out a bunch of ideas and not so much just to be fast, but if you, you know, you're, you've got your, your keyboard, your piano, the touchscreen, whatever you're doing, whether it's MIDI or Bluetooth or your mouse, depending on where, whether you're using FL Studio Mobile on, the, on, a, on a phone or a tablet or the desktop, it just depends, right? You can create a good melody and then what you can do is actually go here and start to adjust your scale. Now, this will help, especially for people who aren't as skilled with keyboards or pianos and scales and keys. Well, you know, you can create a nice little melody and you can go through and you can start to adjust your scale right here and you can find the notes that fit perhaps you press the wrong note and maybe it's supposed to be a sharp or it's a flat maybe it's you know in this case let's say you 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 did like a i don't know like an a sharp and it could have been uh you know like a, a it's supposed to be a g or, or or something or maybe it's an a you know whatever it may be you can actually set your scale here or even just start with this and start messing around find a scale that works with the sound that you have and this will this is essentially a guide it helps so much guys it helps so much especially when you're using a touch screen because sometimes you may touch the wrong button uh, the wrong key and it's just like it could be a crutch for some people and it could just be a tool for accuracy for others um or it could, you know it could be a learning tool guys there's so many things you can do with this software and just just like you know being patient and exploring right so i want to thank you guys so much for checking this one out as usual guys look winning with blends of course is justin blends again if you like what you're hearing subscribe to the channel give a thumbs up tell a friend and please do leave a comment i would love to hear more from you guys um i appreciate you all and and your time here is absolutely welcome so uh, let's you know as i always say guys let's win together there's a lot of opportunities out here for all of us. All the best guys. All right. Again, workflow tips and tricks. Some of the best workflow tips and tricks out there. All right, guys, take it easy until next time.